I'm Charles Goddard, Editorial Director of The Economist Group and Executive Director of our World Ocean Initiative. Welcome to the launch of Back to Blue, an initiative of The Economist Group and the Nippon Foundation, and the signing, indeed, of a memorandum of understanding for this initiative between the two organizations. We began our own World Ocean Summit in 2012 with the ambition of galvanizing a global conversation on the greatest challenges facing the seas. If anything ought to be too big to fail, the newspaper said more recently, it is the ocean. As the largest single ecosystem, it's vital to life on Earth and its good health essential to human well-being. Yet, of course, the ocean, the health of the ocean continues to deteriorate, as we are hearing at this week's virtual World Ocean Summit. I won't repeat all the reasons why, I'm sure you're aware of many of those. And of course, we aren't at the summit just talking about the problems of the oceans. The summit is also sounding the bell of change. So many of our excellent speakers and you, our delegates, are the source of exciting new ideas and solutions that are coaxing us in the direction of a more sustainable ocean economy. The ocean is a global commons in need of rational planning and management at the local, national and international levels. Commitments such as those at the uh, those of the 14 heads of state uh, making up the high level panel for a sustainable ocean economy are, I think, indicative of how this tide may slowly be turning. How the ocean fares during this delayed super year at COP26 on climate change, at COP15 on biodiversity, I hope may offer further reasons for optimism uh, and away uh, from pessimism. We, of course, at The Economist are rational optimists, uh, as are our counterparts I, uh, and friends at the Nippon Foundation. Indeed, the two organizations share a common understanding of the need for evidence-based approaches and solutions to the pressing issues faced by the ocean. The Nippon Foundation is Japan's most prominent philanthropic organization. During the course of this launch, you'll hear from its chairman, Yohei Sasakawa, about the organization's passion for the ocean and for restoring the health of the ocean. The Nippon Foundation has supported some of the most extraordinary science programs, including now uh, one underway, the Nippon Foundation GEBCO Seabed 2030 program, which aims to map the entire seafloor by the end of this decade. Seabed 2030 is designed as an open source platform and I think, uh, and I'm sure everybody hopes, will help transform scientific understanding of the ocean. The Economist Group, for its part, and you will hear shortly also from our own chairman, uh, Lord Dayton, is in its element when it applies the tools of economics to pressing public policy issues. Um, the ocean, of course, is uh, a, a, a prime example of this uh, market failure and of the tragedy uh, of the commons. And reimagining an ocean in robust health and with a vital economy has been the primary task and the primary focus, indeed, of the group's World Ocean Summit and World Ocean Initiative. Back to blue, the new joint initiative that the Economist Group and the Nippon Foundation are launching today brings these shared interests and intentions together in an ambitious multi-year program focused initially on the issue of pollution in the ocean. Plastic pollution, of course, is already a well-served issue, but important gaps do remain. Most countries, for example, lack a coherent plan to reduce plastic pollution. In just a few months' time, in mid-2021, the Back to Blue initiative will be releasing the first of a set of tools to address such gaps, an index measuring countries' capacity to manage the plastic life cycle. Pollution from chemicals, by contrast, is widely underserved as an issue. There is, at present, no comprehensive knowledge of the distribution, abundance, and diversity of contaminants in the sea, or indeed of their impact. This less visible pollution is correspondingly less visible in the global ocean agenda. Building an informed dialogue and broader awareness around chemical pollution and its impact on ocean sea ecosystems and on biodiversity and its impact on human health is, is long overdue. These are supported by the findings of a survey we conducted 
among the general public, as well as businesses and the public sector as we shaped our Back to Blue initiative. The survey found that most consumers are highly concerned about ocean-related issues. Indeed, 83% of the general public are concerned with issues affecting the ocean, according to the survey. When we look at the issues that rank most highly among their concerns and are top priorities for restoring ocean health, it's quite clear both among businesses and the public sector and consumers that plastic pollution and chemical pollution rank the top two among the top two concerns and priorities they have, followed by climate change and ocean biodiversity. In this launch session, we will be shortly uh, airing a video um, after which Mr. Sasakawa, the chairman of the Nippon Foundation, will be making some comments. He'll be followed by uh, Lord Dayton from the Economist Group, who will also make some comments. And then we will be signing um, uh, a memorandum of understanding between uh, the Nippon Foundation and uh, the Economist Group. Uh, and then I'll make a few closing comments. So let us move straight to the video. Climate change, global warming and biodiversity loss are the most challenging anthropogenic threats facing the Earth. The ocean, Earth's largest ecosystem, has done more than its fair share of absorbing heat and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, putting at risk its key functions of regulating the biosphere and climate and generating half the oxygen we breathe. A healthy ocean is indispensable for life on Earth and for human life to thrive. The ever-increasing human activities are now posing a real threat to the well-being of our seas and to our own well-being and that of future generations. The oceans changed. The human impact on the seas has been profound. It's the cumulative nature of this growing economic activity that places additional stresses on an already stressed ocean. I believe The Economist thrives when we apply the tools of economics to pressing public policy issues. We must quickly come to grips with plastics and chemical pollution. And that's the focus of our initiative with the Nippon Foundation. With its diverse programs building and nurturing ocean networks, research and professionals, the Nippon Foundation has a global reputation for championing ocean science and health. The initiative between the Economist Group and the Nippon Foundation aims to build a multi-year program in three interconnected areas – plastics, chemicals and their impact on ocean health. We believe that by looking at pollution in this way, we can draw a more comprehensive understanding of the overall impact that pollution has on the ocean and marine biodiversity. By way of science, technologies, awareness raising, and networks aimed at improvements in public policy and business practices. The opportunity before us is exciting and real that of redressing the imbalances caused by human activity and setting ourselves on the path to sustainability. Lord Dayton, participant of the World Ocean Summit Virtual Week. The mother ocean that covers 70% of the Earth's surface is silently crying out. I am able to understand how profound this outcry is. I wonder if you, the participant of this event, can hear it too. We are very much aware of the land-based problems that occur around us. Great efforts are being made towards their solutions, aided by large amounts of available 
information. However, when it comes to understanding the multifaceted problems of the ocean that, I repeat, covers 70% of the Earth's surface, I believe that our understanding is still very poor. This is already a threat to the human security for every individual on this planet. I am and have been very concerned whether if left unattended, mankind would be able to survive for the next 500 to 1,000 years into the future. For 30 years, I have undertaken various initiatives with the belief that there will be no survival for mankind without sustainable environmental conservation of the ocean. The diverse initiatives include such areas as nurturing 1,500 ocean professionals from 150 countries, building probably the world's largest network of ocean research institutes and scientists engaging in research and taking action with government to better manage marine litter and marine resources, and collaborating with international organizations and governments towards securing stable order of the oceans, subject to compliance with the law of the sea. I am delighted to announce that we, the Nippon Foundation, a long time contributor to the sustainable ocean. And The Economist, a trusted media company with a vast global network, unique perspectives and analytical expertise are launching the Back to Blue Initiative. The Economist and the Nippon Foundation sponsored a collaborative webinar series, The Blue Recovery, last July. It was then that I felt the immense potential that two organizations can have in creating real positive change towards a sustainable ocean. Now is the time. Let us collaborate in thought and in action to tackle the multifaceted ocean issues for our future. And now is the time. Let us bring the blue ocean back to pass it on to the next 1,000 years. Thank you. Hello, and firstly, let me extend my warm thanks on behalf of the Economist Group to Chairman Sasakawa and say what a great privilege and inspiration it is to be building a joint initiative with the Nippon Foundation on the ocean. I've had a number of excellent conversations with uh, Chairman Sasakawa, so I know uh, how passionate he is about this subject. Back to Blue, which frames what we'll tackle and achieve together, is in many ways the culmination of the extraordinary work that our two organizations have each undertaken, separately and independently, on the ocean. I personally am greatly moved by the ambition and passion of Sasakawa-san and the Nippon Foundation in forging wonderful programs such as Seabed 2030. This aims to map the entire floor of the ocean, no less, and share this precious data as an open source tool for the world. It will change how we view the ocean. We ourselves at The Economist Group have also developed our own passion for the ocean. Some might even say unexpectedly. We held our first World Ocean Summit in 2012 in Singapore, after we'd argued in the newspaper that the seas were in trouble and that human activities were having a profound impact on ocean health. We hoped, we had no idea, 
this would resonate so powerfully with our audience. The summit quickly became, as one attendee quipped, a midwife for the ocean at a time when governments, scientists, NGOs and businesses needed urgently to put their heads together to solve the ocean's growing problems. A decade or so later, we at The Economist Group are more committed than ever to our vision of an, an ocean in robust health and with a vital economy. The ocean is simply too big to fail, The Economist has argued, and the consequences too dire. Human health, indeed, would be at risk without a thriving, healthy ocean. Human well-being, with so many livelihoods depending on the seas, and with so much pleasure and solace derived from the ocean, would be infinitely poorer. That's why I am personally so delighted to cut the ribbon for the, this collaboration between The Economist Group and the Nippon Foundation. It's sometimes said that we bring the tools of economics to pressing global public policy issues. That's true, but here we marry two organizations that share a common understanding of the need to improve evidence-based approaches to solving the ocean's problems and to restoring ocean health and promoting sustainability. We couldn't be more excited to be launching this partnership and to get down to the work that matters and to making a difference. I am absolutely delighted that we're able um, to announce this exciting joint initiative today at our World Ocean Summit. Through Back to Blue, the Economist Group and the Nippon Foundation aim to assemble a, a more complete picture of the scope, extent and governance of pollution in the ocean and ask how efforts to reduce pollution might be made more effective and more widely uh, adopted. None of this can be done, of course, without close coordination and consultation with businesses, governments, academia, and the many other extraordinary organizations and individuals who share the vision of an ocean in robust health uh, and with a vital economy. We look forward in this joint initiative to being able, being able to share with you shortly more details about our joint program and together begin the exciting work of addressing this complex and vexing problem of pollution. Thank you very much for joining us and for listening.